Hi Nature Explorers, this week's video is all about butterflies and moths. Now all butterflies and moths follow the same basic life cycle in that they start with an egg which becomes a caterpillar which then pupates and then becomes an adult. But there's a huge amount of variation between species in the timing of those stages. So for example some species will spend winter as a caterpillar whereas others will spend winter as a pupa or an egg. So how do you tell the difference between butterflies and moths? Now it's harder than you might think. I've put together three general rules. There are exceptions to them, but they should point you in the right direction. So number one, how is it holding its wings when it's resting? Now butterflies tend to hold their wings up like this, like a sailboat when they're resting. Whereas moths will hold their wings over their backs like a tent or flat on the surface that they're sitting on. The second thing to look out for is is it flying in the day or is it flying at night? Now all butterflies fly during the day but there are moths that fly during the day as well so that might be a tricky one that catches you out. And the third thing is to look at their antennae. Now all butterfly antennae have little clubs at the end, little bobbly end bits whereas moth antennae are much more variable and they can be longer and have feathers at the end. So butterfly, moth. Here's a video of something and I want you to work out whether it's a butterfly or a moth. Did you guess what it was? It was a small purple and gold moth or a mint moth as some people call them. Now it was flying in the day which might have caught you out but it had quite long antennae and also when it rested on the leaves it held its wings flat. Now unfortunately for caterpillars they make a really good snack. They don't move very fast and they're full of protein so lots of predators want to eat them. So caterpillars have to find lots of different ways to avoid being found and eaten by predators. And one of the things that they do is to use camouflage and that means being the same colour as the plant that they're sitting on. Now often this works better for smaller caterpillars because they're better at hiding. The caterpillars that don't try to hide are often very brightly coloured and they don't taste very nice either and they're brightly coloured to help predators remember that those caterpillars aren't very yummy. So if you think about other things that are brightly coloured, so they're orange and black or yellow and black, they're also poisonous and unpleasant to eat too. So it's a general rule that all predators can follow. Now here's a picture of a cinnabar moth caterpillar and the cinnabar moth caterpillar is orange and black and it feeds on a plant called ragwort. Now ragwort has got lots of toxins in the leaves and the caterpillar stores up these toxins so that when or if it gets eaten by a predator it will taste horrible. What you can do is play a game based on caterpillar colours. So what I've done is I've made some caterpillars and some of them are camouflaged like this one so you can make them brown or green or yellowy and some of them have got warning colorations whoops, like this one <laughs> and you can hide them around your garden and you can see if um, your parents or your brothers and sisters can find your caterpillars and what you'll probably find is that they'll find the brightly colored ones much more easily than the browny green ones and you can experiment with different sizes as well and you can see what size caterpillars with what colorations are easier to spot and you can even make it into a reward based system whereby if you find the camouflage caterpillars you get something yummy like a chocolate button or some sweets. So we've looked at how caterpillars can use colour to avoid being eaten either by camouflaging themselves or being brightly coloured to advertise the fact that they don't taste very nice. Now there's other things that caterpillars can do too. Some caterpillars live in big groups and spin a web over themselves to stop predators being able to reach them. There are caterpillars that pretend to be things that aren't edible at all, so they'll look like sticks or they'll look like bird poo. And the other way of avoiding being eaten is to be really hairy and bristly, and this makes them really uncomfortable to eat. Now here's a picture of a pale tussock moth caterpillar doing just that. 
the summertime is a really good time of year to look for caterpillars. There's a couple of things that you can do to find caterpillars. One is to do tree beating. Uh, which we did in our mini beast video because there's quite a few species of moth and butterfly caterpillars um, that like to feed on broadleaf trees so that's things like oak, birch, uh, willow, that kind of thing. The other thing that you can do is find plants that caterpillars like to eat um, and look for clues on those plants and one plant in particular that caterpillars love to eat um, that you could try and grow in your garden are nettles. Um, now probably the most common butterflies that you'll know that like nettles are uh, the peacock butterfly and the small tortoiseshell. So I want to show you some clues um, to the fact that butterflies are using these bushes. Now this is a folded up leaf and that is a classic sign that there's a caterpillar in there because it's folded up and held together um, with some silk. Um, and there's also, I'm going to show you a photo of, um, is some caterpillar poo. So if you find folded up leaves and caterpillar poo, you're sure to find a caterpillar very close by. Meadows are also really great places to look for caterpillars because there's a lot of caterpillars that like to eat different types of grasses, um, particularly Coxfoot, Timothy, uh, fescues, bromes, that sort of thing. So if you can find somewhere where the grasses all look really different at the top, that means you've got lots of different species of grasses and it's worth having a rummage to see if you can find caterpillars there. Another thing that you can do is if you see an adult butterfly flying around your garden, you can look up the life cycle of that butterfly and look up to see what its caterpillars like to eat. So in our garden um, I found a holly blue butterfly laying her eggs on the flower buds of my holly. Once the egg of the holly blue hatches, the caterpillar burrows its head into the flower bud and sits there and eats out the middle of the bud. The other interesting thing about the holly blue is that every year it has two sets of adults. So early in the spring one lot of adults emerges and those adults lay their eggs on the flower buds of holly. And then those caterpillars, when they become adults during the same summer, they don't lay their eggs on the flowers of holly, they lay their eggs on the flowers of ivy. So if I wanted to find holly blue caterpillars late in the season, looking on holly would be a waste of time because they're all on ivy at that point. So if you're looking for a specific caterpillar, it really pays to know what their life cycle is. way to get a good look at moths is to set a light trap and leave it out overnight. Now this is my light trap so you can see I've got a very bright bulb and then around the bulb there's these plastic fins and the idea is that the moths fly towards the light, bump into the fins and then fall down into my trap. Now inside the trap I've got some egg boxes and bits of card so that the moths that fall in there can hide in there until the morning. Now you can either try and build one like this or a much simpler way of attracting moths to a light trap is to build one using a white sheet which you can hang over a washing line or over a wall and you can shine a really bright torch at the sheet and the moths will be attracted to that bright white sheet and you can leave that out overnight and come out in the morning and check and see what's landed on your sheet. 
Now if you're going to do that, it's really good to choose a night where there's not very much wind and it's quite mild um, and it's not going to rain. And it's also a good idea if you choose to do it on a night where there's either a lot of cloud cover or the moon's really quite small. So here we are back at the moth trap. I've come out quite early in the morning and um, it's about seven o'clock and that's a really good idea when you're emptying the moth trap to come out this early because the moths that you see in there will still be cold um, and they won't be very active so they won't fly off and you can have a good look at them. Now as you approach your moth trap it's a good idea to um, keep your eyes peeled and have a look in the grass around it or the vegetation around it because not all the moths will have gone into the trap and um, so you need to be careful that you don't stand on any or squash any um, and I definitely don't bring Briar and Farn and the poodles out when I'm checking the moth trap because they'll just trample on everything. Other stuff that I bring out with me is um, my trusty moth guide um, and also this book here, this here, is my garden diary and I really recommend that as you're looking more at the wildlife in your garden that I recommend that you start making a little diary of what you've seen and when and and things you've done in your garden to help wildlife because it's a really good way of tracking your achievements and also you can look back on previous years and and look at when things first appeared and and hopefully see your garden species list increasing here we are at the trap now you'll see on the top there there's already flies and things and one of the things with a moth trap is lots and lots of different invertebrates come to light so you might not get many moths but you might get things like flies and wasps um earlier in may you might get things like cockchafers and stuff like that so let's see what we've got so i'll just take the light out very careful not to squash anything And I'll just take this out. Oh, what have we got? Little fly. Lots of flies on there. Let's see what we've got in here. Ah! Now, this one down here, if you can see, just on the right, that's a spectacle. And uh, that's called a spectacle because he looks like he's wearing a pair of spectacles. That's a lovely moth to spot, really easy to spot. And then. Over here at the back, we've got buff ermin, and you can see there's crane flies and all sorts of things in there. So, oh, and we think we've got, yay, that pink one at the back is a small elephant hawk moth, I think. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop getting so excited and I'm going to carefully unpack my moth trap and um, I am going to take a photo of all the different species that I find for you so that you can share the joy of my moth trap. So if you want to encourage butterflies and moths into your garden, you need to think about what they need at different stages in their life cycle. So let's start with the adult forms. Now adult butterflies and moths need lots of nectar to provide them with energy for flying. So good plants to encourage butterflies are things like buddleia and knapweed because they produce a lot of nectar. Moths prefer to feed on flowers that bloom and produce a heavy scent in the evening. So that's things like um, jasmine, white campion, uh, evening primrose, that sort of thing. So let's think about the caterpillar form of the life cycle. Now, different caterpillars prefer to feed on different plants and that's because they've evolved to cope with the different defences that the plants have to stop themselves being eaten. Plants that tend to support a big number of different caterpillars are things like nettles and docks um, and also willow herb as well, that's another good one. So you could try and encourage those into your gardens. There's also a big group of caterpillars that like to feed on grasses. So if you do something like don't mow your lawn during May or leave a long patch of grass during the summer months, um, then that will provide lots of grass for all those caterpillars to eat. And then the final thing is that you can leave areas of loose bare soil in flower beds or vegetable patches so that the overwintering caterpillars can burrow down into the soil and spend the winter there safely and it also provides them somewhere to pupate as well. So thank you for watching the video and I hope you've enjoyed it and good luck butterfly, caterpillar and moth spotting.